I could never be a murderer or a thief because everybody remembers me. So, my cat has now decided literally the minute the tripod comes out that it's his turn to be filmed. He really is a little bit of a diva, aren't you, darling? Yes, you are. <laughs> so, Jean-Claude wants to say hello today. We've got a bit of an interesting haul today uh, because it's a, a, a very mixed bag of interesting things. But let's go for it and show you what we've got. Now, you've got to go, go and lie on the clothes. Go on. Go and lie on the clothes. Go on. No, you can't hang around here all the time. He's going to hang around. OK, we'll just ignore him. He's, as I said, he's getting too much. He wants to be the star of everything. So this outfit is the last of the Bandura haul. I promise it's the last. <laughs> but the thing is, I did so well. I, really, I probably had about 10 wearable outfits from that one trip into that shop. And I paid very little money for all of them. So again, this will be working out at 13 ringgit 50, which is very, very, very reasonable. Now, I originally picked this up thinking it was a nighty, but realised quickly enough that you really couldn't go to bed in something that had long dingly dangles all over it. Um, and I tried it on, I thought, actually, you know, that's actually, I know I avoid white, but I think this is actually rather cute. So I paired it with this rather beautiful, thrifted from England, blossom necklace. Um, and the earrings that I actually already had that matched it perfectly. I put my beautiful lavender pearls around my wrist and I tried it with three different skirts. I tried it with a plain white skirt with just some ribbing on it and it looked very nice, but it actually sat very low and you could see literally where it was. I tried it with that green one that, with the sort of marbly effect on it, the parachute sort of one, and it looked really nice with that, but that was a little short for what I wanted to look um, and I put it with the blue and actually I feel that the blue balances my hair at the top and I actually like the look of it. It pulls out the blue of the flowers, gives a bit more colour than just the plain white and I think this works. So my final Banduro outfit, very romantic, very pretty, very summertime but with a little touch of something interesting about it. I guess you could probably tie these up into bows if you didn't want them dangling in your glass of wine or in your dinner or whatever you were doing. What do you think? Is this too much? Is anything ever too much? I mean, as long as you're comfortable in it and it's got quite a high neck, it's not showing too many wrinkly bits, it covers the arms, um, but it's very soft and cool and pretty. So, that's our first outfit. Now, the rest of this lot is not thrift shop items these are items that are going with me i go literally i will be going tomorrow to japan and they've all got reasons behind them um, and then i'm going on to korea and i'm going to show you the i the outfit that i'm going to wear for the wedding so let's without further ado let's get on with it so i was out looking for things suitable to wear to the wedding in Korea, um, I couldn't, I was really struggling because I didn't want to be too sparkly, sequiny, um, diamante styly, and I didn't want, I didn't want to disappear into the background completely. Um, I wanted to be me, and that's very difficult because most of the sort of like the mothers of the bride, the mothers of the groom type outfits are all very, very similar and they're all very not me. Lots of sort of sways of chiffon and I just sort of didn't, wasn't feeling any of it. But whilst I was out doing that, I came across my favourite shop. Now, this is the same shop that I bought this lovely long pink jacket that you see me wearing over so many things, like a dress jacket, double layer. Um, and it's a shop called Geb, G-E-B, Geb. And I hadn't been in there since I bought this, which is a couple of, good couple of years ago. And yet I walked in and the woman remembered me. This is a, I could never be a murderer or a thief because everybody remembers me and I would not get away with anything. Oh, there, oh yeah, that lady with the blue hair banterites. 
no good at all. Anyway, so I found this. This was not cheap. This was not thrifted. This was me paying much more than I should have done for something that I literally fell in love with the minute I saw it. So this is actually printed to look like an Indian quilted coat with all the stitching on it. And it's every shade of blue you can imagine, plus a bit of red. So I've popped on my newly rethreaded coral, um, which I think looks dashing with it. Um, and this is just something that, again, like the pink one, will be so useful. You can use it undone, just worn as a jacket, a light coat, which in the springtime over there is going to be lovely to layer up. Um, or you can wear it as a dress like this. I think it's a very, very versatile. I rarely, rarely buy anything for myself that's brand new. But this I could not resist. And I really hope you appreciate why because it really is quite stunning. So that was my real naughtiness. And I'm putting my hand up to it. it costs more than my wedding outfit. <laughs> so, there we go. Okay, so my daughter is already booked to go to the Harry Potter Park. And it's gonna be a, quite a bit colder there than it is here. Um, I think round about, at the moment, is between sort of 12 and 18 there. Um, and here it's 32, so that's quite a big drop in temperature. And I know that you tend to feel it because when I go back to England, it hits me like a brick. But anyway, so she bought this skirt, which is a proper Harry Potter merchandise skirt. And it's still got its Harry Potter label in. I haven't taken it out yet because I haven't worn it. So this is a proper Harry Potter skirt. Um, and it's got all the little constellations with all the different... Um, Ravenclaw and um, Slytherin, Hufflepuff and Gryffindor. So I'm actually chosen. I chose myself because when I did the test, it put me in Gryffindor and I thought I don't want to be in Gryffindor. I thought I, I told Liza, I don't, I don't know whether I'd want to be a Ravenclaw or be a Hufflepuff. And I thought, but I'd probably be like both. I'd be a Puffleclaw or a raven puff i don't know but i that's me i can't make up my mind so i have my wand we make wands with the kids they love making wands um this is this is one i put together um and i put on a bit of make makeup i put on a bit of jewelry that i felt looked a bit sort of like a teacher at hogwarts might wear um i could be an art teacher at hogwarts in fact i've got a t-shirt that i wear when i'm teaching that says um, Hogwarts wasn't hiring, so I teach muggles instead. <laughs> but anyway, so this is my going to... I will be wearing my um, velvet ankle boots. And sadly, I haven't got my sparkly purple boots that I wore to the studio in England. But, you know, we, we have to do the best you can. I'll wear my velvet ones. Um, now, I also wanted to show you whilst I was in my Harry Potter go gear... My nanny Niffler, it's not actually mine, it's my grandson's. But my daughter, who's a talented little maker, she made all these little baby Nifflers. And this is a typical Niffler Niffler, black and furry and cute, a bit like a platypus duck that steals gold. But she made for my grandson a nanny Niffler. Now you can see why it's called the nanny Niffler, because it is the crafty nana in Niffly for Niffler form. And it probably loves jewellery too, just like the Nana. So, yes, yeah, so this is my um, little blue-haired Nana Niffler. Isn't he cute? I'll make sure I do a close-up for you of him. So, and my cat even gets jealous of the Nanny Niffler if he gets cuddled. So, that's the Nana Niffler. Also, amongst things that she's already planned to do, she says we're going to go and do a cherry blossom photo shoot. And I found this beautiful scarf, again in Bandura. So there's me saying I'd finished with the Bandura stuff, but there's another one. So I'm going to take my little pink dress and I'm going to put it with this cherry blossom scarf so that when we do our photo shoot of cherry blossom, I'm all pink and blossomy as well, but with a little bit of blue just to pick out the hair. And it's cute. So that's the next outfit. And we're on to our final and most important outfit. 
Yes, that's the first one asking him, is it your husband? Oh, and how did she know? That's oh. great, does that make me look old? No, and then she said, oh, handsome, and I just... Mm. So this is what I finally chose to wear for my son's wedding. My son and Joy's wedding. Um, it's not traditional. Uh, they did, Joy, his lovely wife, said to me, I'm hiring a ham box for my parents. Would you like me to hire you one? But I felt that that's their thing and they should shine in that. And I didn't want to sort of be in like wearing their clothes. Now, obviously, this is not certainly not English. <laughs> Um, it is very much Indian, but Indian is the style that I feel comfortable in. Um, and I quite often choose to wear Indian clothes. Um, I hope nobody thinks that it's a appropriation, but they're comfortable. They suit me. And I like the over the top without being over the top. It's got all this beautiful printing on, but it isn't sparkly. It isn't glittery. I mean, some of them are, but this one definitely isn't. My daughter even sweetly said to me, oh, I could do some embroidery and put some, and I said, no, no, it doesn't need it. Um, and the thing is, it also then gives me a chance to wear some sentimental pieces of jewelry. Now, the earrings and, the, yes, this be here, were my mother's, they're Butler and Wilson, um, they're vintage and she passed on the 24th of, November, of December this year, Christmas Eve. She did get the chance to meet um, my son's then fiance. So, uh, but she obviously didn't make it to the wedding. So I'm wearing her bees. Um, this is the family bee that all the ladies in my family wear. And it matches my Gucci bee that my daughter bought me, is the real thing. Um, and I found in La Visa this little necklace that I think goes really well with my mother's bees. It's a little bit whiter, but I think it's a really good match. So I was really chuffed when I found this. And funnily enough, it probably cost this exactly the same as the outfit. The outfit was from Lazada. It really, really was not expensive. Um, I think it was 57 ringgit. Um, but it's not about how much something costs. It's about how much you love it. Um, and my husband reminded me of a story which shows that I've always been a little bit thrifty. <laughs> um, when we got married, I had a little antique shop and I had this beautiful curved Art Deco display cabinet in my little antique shop. And there was a lady down the road that had a clothes shop and she really coveted my cabinet. She wanted it really badly. She had a little lace suit with a little bolero jacket and a very full lace skirt. And we're talking about, I think it was 1984 we got married. Um, we're talking about, a, was it 84 or 89? 89. 89. So um, my husband's counting. It was 89. Um, so we're talking about sort of a Madonna time. We're talking about 80s. We're talking about, you know, lacy and... I will try and put a picture in if I can find one. <laughs> we lost a lot of our wedding photographs in one of our moves. But anyway, so that was in her shop and I had the cabinet she wanted. So we did a swap. I got the outfit, she got the cabinet and everyone was happy. But it just goes to show even my wedding dress was a swap. <laughs> anyway, so this is the outfit. Um, I did buy a backup online just in case and believe it or not it didn't arrive so thank god this fitted absolutely like a glove and I loved it as soon as I put it on so it really doesn't matter that the other one didn't arrive and I probably wouldn't have liked it as much anyway it was much much plainer and just a purple dress so anyway this is my wedding outfit um I thrifted these shoes in Wales, and I'm just trying to think which might have been Abergavenny. These were my most expensive buy at eight pounds. They're from Next, and they're in very good condition, like new. But 
I think they're a really good match with this. They're probably more silver than I would have liked, but I might even touch up the, and make the toes a little bit golder so that it matches the sort of gold in the um, shawl and the trousers and the sleeves. Um, I haven't ironed it today because I'm going to pack it now and it's going to need to be completely ironed when I get it out the other end and I really feel a bit silly just to be ironing it to pack it. But here we go. This is as it is. I'm pleased with it. I think that it's quiet enough that I'm not being in anyone's face, but it's wild enough that I feel comfortable and I'm not a shrinking violet by any stretch of the imaginations. This suits me, I feel. I really do. Um, so yes, so this is my outfit with my bees. Loads of sentimental um, value to the jewellery that I'm wearing with it. Uh, probably not the most over the top, but it all has meaning for me and I'm really happy to put this outfit together. My husband just kicked the tripod. <laughs> I'm really happy to put this together for the wedding. Um, he's going to be dressing up in a, a grey and um, sort of tweedy jacket, which won't look terrible with this. He's wearing black, which will always look fine. Um, so, you know, we go to we go together quite nicely show you his jacket. Marks and Spencers. Good. Always good. Anyway, so I'm now going off into the blue to have fabulous adventures. I may not have a video up every single week when I'm away because I might not get an, enough finished before I go. So just be warned, there might be a gap, but do believe I will be back. And when I am back, I will have all my adventures in Japan and Korea to share with you. Have a brilliant time in the, in the meantime. I'm planning to. I'm planning to have so much fun, it's ridiculous. See you soon. <laughs>